Hey guys, we're getting ready to go out and film the beluga, but first, got it all folded up like this. And uh, I actually did most of the folding here. Sam helped me a bit and I was noticing, yeah, there's the light here. You wanna be careful if you're folding it to keep it upright or maybe on that side. Um, interesting that the handlebars fit in between. There's no magnetic clasp, there's no bungees or anything like that, but it gets pretty compact. And I have listed those details back at the site, the folded dimensions, as well as the unfolded dimensions, given that this is a fat tire bike and you know, 20 inches by four and a quarter. So they're, they're extra fat, really slick, kind of nice aluminum alloy fenders. So if they do get scratched during transportation, they're not gonna get rusty and stuff, which is nice. And then this extra long, really custom seat post that contains the battery. A lot of the other folding bikes we've been looking at, the battery slides in uh, kind of the main portion of the tube here, but that allows it to be narrower so you won't bump your knees and it folds a little bit smaller as a result. I love that it's got a chain guide here so it's not gonna fall off. Uh, when it is folded. And then the charging port's pretty easy to access right there, whether the battery is on or off the bike. You just, I mean, it's, when I say easy, I guess it's high up, it's not hidden, but it is a little bit, you kind of need your fingers to get in there and pop that cover. So it's pretty well protected in a way. Um, Sam had shown me that, you know, there's the telescoping folding stem and he kind of rotated the handlebar so the brake levers pointed up and see how they're fit just right in between the frame there. Just be careful because you see how close they are to the disc brake rotors and everything. I think this is another one of the bikes where you can, you can almost like sit on this thing. Um, there's a little bit of crowding going on, but if you were at a bus station or something like that, and it does roll. Sam, do you, can you add anything to this or kind of demo some of that? Yeah, you can dolly it. Um... You should telescope your seat up a little bit higher, perhaps. And but yeah, see how the the frame drops a little bit, so it's kind of a pivoting thing. I was trying to minimize the space because I was just doing the measurements. Yeah, and now you're higher than this folded area here, so when you sit on it, you're not going to be... get an enema accidentally. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Then we open this up, we slide it up, and then that's when you want to do the dolly effect with it. Look at that! So, Isn't that cool? A lot of bikes will kind of. You try to do this and they're kind of wobbly or they're not. This is really stable when I'm pushing it around. You can't back the bike up because the pedals will go backwards. Oh, yeah. But you can go forward with it and you can make those really tight turns with it to head to where you need to go with it. Okay. And that keeps you from having to actually pick the bike up. Which is great because this is a heavier bike. I was just doing the specs over here. Let's see. 64 pounds on the bike. And then I weighed the, the seat with the seat post connected and it's eight and a half, well, 8.1 pounds, 7.5 pounds if you took the saddle off. I like that it does have a front and rear light, but the rear one is not integrated and it might be kind of cool to turn those on. Oh, see here, here we go. See, he swivels the handlebars back into place. Very nice. And this display, see how it was backlit for a second? Once it's on, if you hold the up button like this, there's the backlighting. We've got that front headlight, but it doesn't, it doesn't point where you steer. It's connected to the head tube of the bike. And there's actually a lot of additional mounting points there for maybe the front basket. That's right, they have a frame mounted basket like you see on some of the other brands. And a rear mounted rack option Correct. as well. And you know, you can see there's some extra eyelets down there, but notice that that, that rear light is not, it's, it's independent. So it requires two AAA batteries. Um, what do we say we get out there and take this thing for a ride? Let's do it. Well, hey guys, as usual, we're losing light here, but uh, having a lot of fun. This is the Quali Sports Beluga, which is a beautiful white whale. I saw, a, yeah, it was like a Reddit video recently where someone was like filming an actual beluga and they dropped their camera and it found it and it picked it up and brought it to him. It was beautiful. I hope you can find that video and enjoy it like I did. <laughs> He's like, I saw that too. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. How is that possible? <laughs> it's the internet. You know, it went viral is what it was. <laughs> it was yeah. really precious, it right? It was. That's the whole deal, like getting outside, riding with your friends, enjoying nature, um, you know, and being safe, right? I love that we got the lights. Now we've pulled out the little tab and we got the independent light on the rear, but it's got a nice little mounting point. It's metal. It's not gonna like get kicked around quite as easily. The front ones, you know, it's the same thing. Like, Pretty bright. I think this is more of a B scene than C where you're going, but that's fine. No reflective sidewall stripes or anything, but I do really like the tires. We talked about how they're 20 by four and a quarter. So they're extra fat. Normal fat tires are just four inches. There are some that are 4.9, but the majority are four. Uh, so anyway, we got those cast alloy rims, which are gonna be really sturdy if you're a heavier rider and just more durable than spokes, but they do add weight. So I think we were saying, do you remember the weight? How can I be forgetting this? It's like. 64 pounds. 64 pounds, something yeah, like with that. With the battery. 
Yeah, that's right, that's right. And the battery is about 8.1 pounds when the saddle's connected. And you can take it off, there's a disconnect down here. But one of the trade-offs with this system is that the battery doesn't really lock to the bike. So if someone knows this is an e-bike and you've just got the wheel locked or something, they could steal your battery. So I'd recommend looping through here, maybe getting a seat leash or something. I love that they got the chain guide, 52 tooth chain ring, uh, 14 to 28 tooth, seven speed Shimano cassette turny derail your it's entry level stuff right but it gets the job done it helps to keep the price low at $13.99 if you have the 48 volt 10.5 amp hour battery pack this is a 504 watt hour system 48 volts 500 watt maybe 750 watt peak I mean, it's hard to say they just say 500 watt uh planetary geared motor down here but sam has another version over here this one has a 350 watt motor with uh, the 14 amp hour battery. So it's a higher capacity. Tell me about all these options because the, the racks and everything are. Yeah, so you can do racks front and rack on the back. And the deal with this bike was we sold a few of them last year and some of the customers were complaining it just didn't quite have enough bump, enough power, enough hill climbing ability. Yeah. So Daniel said, well, let's just make it a 500 watt 48 volt then. So you're sacrificing 40% range on that bike. Yeah. Well, not necessarily because that's 48 volt. It and could it's be 10.5. This is 36 volt, 14 amp hour. Same size battery, but just configured differently. And here's the thing. So like the lower watt motor, for someone like me, I weigh 135 pounds. Maybe I don't need all that extra power, but if I was climbing and with a 64 pound bike, I, I might like it. So I, I like the direction they're going. The point with the rack, Sam, is that they, they'll they sell the bike with the racks. It's like a hundred bucks extra and they'll pre-install yeah. them, right? $50 each that you can get from the dealer. Yeah, and they're not pre-installed. When you get them, you'd have to install them yourself. If you're buying direct or if you go to a dealer, we can install them for you. We'll do the installation free of charge. Well, that's nice. And Sam, you know, would be able to uphold the warranty and stuff. I asked him, I'm like, so do these guys primarily sell through shops? And he said, no, they sell through Amazon. They do direct. And I was like, why do you carry it? And he's like, well, the founder is got all the right answers. He supports me. He, I mean, what's your experience been? Yeah, so we've had them for about a year now. We've been selling, they got a whole line of bikes. They're all like fish related. You got the <laughs> Nemo, which is a little tiny one. And then they have the Volador, which means flying fish in Spanish. Love it. Then my wife helped them name the dolphin. Mm -hmm. We had an argument on the phone what to call the thing. I was saying, call it a Barracuda. And they had a contest actually up in Northern California. And the three uh, runners were uh, the Stingray, the Wahoo, or the Dolphin. And I was like, Daniel, you got to come up with a name. We were getting ready to review it. We didn't have a name for it. And she yeah. got tired of me arguing with him on the phone and she said just call it the dolphin <laughs> and it's so that's why it's called the dolphin because she yeah and then of course the beluga which is their largest model and each one of those get larger in size and incrementally big and so we've course, reviewed all of them we have and the beluga is the last to review it's the largest one so here we are with the beluga so that's that's great info again for me 13.99 for such a unique bike there aren't too many folding electric bikes with the fat tires that have the slicks and i like those they're quiet they're smooth they're still going to give you some uh balance and some traction but it's not like buzzing the way that the you know the knobby ones are so if you live in a mostly an urban environment and that's the kind of riding you do this is this is a pretty good option in my opinion um no suspension fork aluminum alloy rigid aluminum alloy frame as i mentioned before during the folding part uh, it's narrow so you don't hit your knees quite as easily love that they got the bottle cage bosses and the rack options and that front rack it would mount to that that like steering tube which means it's not going to turn and uh, mess up your steering there's already a lot of weight here like as i was riding i noticed that it kind of pulls a little bit if you've ever ridden a motorcycle you almost have to push a little bit as you're like leaning into a turn because the wheel is heavy so these is counter steer, is what it's called. Counter -steer. Yeah. thank you we got a motorcyclist yeah. right here <laughs> yeah so i had to do that test when i went to do the uh california safety test with the kid that works is that where you got this that. orange helmet buddy yeah, they were like right. we got I a got special the, one for you <laughs> the safety cone off the road <laughs> i love right. it you know it is we we're trying to be safe here this black looks really nice and all the cables blend in but they aren't internally routed like some of the other folding bikes the plus side is they're not going to get pinched but you know it's not as aesthetically pleasing we got the wrap and everything both brake levers have motor inhibitors so you're going to be able to override uh, I don't think this one has throttle operation in zero level of assist. So if I take it all the way down, you know, and, and the throttle's not working, I think you do get throttle override in all the other levels. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn on backlighting by holding the up button. 
Ah, nice. Much easier to read, right? Four ticks on that battery display thing. It's 25% steps. It's possible that that outer ring also counts as a step, in which case it'd be 20% increments still not as nice as having a battery percentage um, and this i like how well sealed this is it's fairly reachable but it's not quite as clicky and like there are occasionally where i'm pushing something and it doesn't happen i just pushed up it didn't go i have to really be intentional about it so there's room for improvement on this display in my opinion it's not removable it's going to be there when you're folding the bike get bumped into but i don't really know of hardly any folding electric bikes that do have removable displays at least you can swivel it we got the throttle over here on the left because the triggers and everything kind of crowd on the right standard trigger shifters over here three steps in one way on the high lever it doesn't have a two-way but that's what you'd expect from shimano tourney kind of the entry-level stuff five levels of assist it's great speed and miles per hour right there you can switch it uh there's a light infographic because the lights are on and we got distance down here i think if i tap the power button it switches to odometer and average speed and then voltage and max speed and then it kind of cycles all the way back through we hold the, the down arrow we get a little bit of walk mode action but you again i'm i'm really having to hold that pretty purposefully here and for, for a bike that does way more, it's nice to have walk mode just in case you're going across a park or something and you get that rack option and you just don't feel like comfortable uh, riding it. Like I'm gonna try to do the settings. There we go. So I was, I was holding up and down and it allows you to kind of reset the trip distance and stuff. Uh, I don't actually know how to get into the settings on this one. Do you, Sam? Uh, this, is, this one, I believe it is plus and minus like you were doing. Yeah. And then that is going to toggle through oh. just your basic stuff like um like reset voltage your battery reset your trip um it does a couple other things on there as well i'm always trying to figure out how to do kilometers per hour and i apologize guys it's the same display on the other quality sports bikes and i might have gone into it then sometimes you hold up and power at the same time to get into the settings um, I just don't know off the top of my head. And sometimes the manufacturers actually purposely design the display so you can't get in there and mess with them. Yeah, because they don't want you to accidentally change the settings. I get that. In any case, trigger throttle, nice to have, good brake setup. I, I say good, it's it's okay. You know, 160 millimeter rotors for a heavier bike, fat tire, it'd be nice to see 180s, but with a folding bike, I understand why they made smaller discs so they don't get bent as easily. And then we've got this like nut DA65. I've never heard of this caliper, but it's mechanical. You can adjust it yourself a little bit easier than hydraulic brakes, but there's more hand effort required and cable stretch that's going to happen. So the drivetrain, the brakes are kind of, ah, uh, they're okay. We've got um, a nicely mounted kickstand that's not going to collide with that left pedal. We've got an awesome sealed cadence sensor right here, much better than if it was the, the big one with the discs could get bumped around. Very relevant on a folding bike. I'm just thinking about durability. And then the controller, the, that's in here. It's in this box. And then we've got that little, like, I don't know what you call it. It's just sort of a spring cable that so that it can stretch when you raise or lower the seat. And I like that they've actually printed off seat heights on the back of that seat post. So you know, like, okay, where did I set it? Maybe you fold it and take the seat off so it's more compact. You can remember how to get it back without having an experiment. I, I really appreciate that. Um, I think that's pretty, pretty comprehensive here. Uh, oh yeah, aluminum alloy fenders, and they're pretty solid. They aren't vibrating a lot during the ride. The tire pressure ratings on these, it's not a range, it's just like one set uh, set number. So this is another area where I wish that the, you know, the tires could be a little bit nicer and have a little bit more information, but I've recorded everything I could find back at the site in the specs. So I feel like pretty good about this, Sam. Do you wanna go for a ride? Let's go over a few other things really quick before we go for the ride. Okay. So you're asking me why I carry the bike. And first yeah. of all, Daniel's got a little bit of a, He's a character and he's got personality and I can relate to someone like that. Really? And we get a little bit of a rapport <laughs> going with each other. Yeah. Then when I call him up, if I have any issues or something, he's more than likely to help me and take care of me. Some of the things that Daniel told me about the bike was Dahan actually helped to design with the folding mechanism and the design of the bike. Oh. The other thing you notice is the unique battery. And you're going to see more and more bikes with the battery in the tube. I like and that. And he said the first one where they got the idea was the E-Flow. And we oh. discussed that on an earlier uh, model as well. Yeah, Excel Group. That, that, Correct. That kind of went out of business, but that, it was like they a were Swiss, thing. Swiss It was a Swiss-built bike. It was called the E-Flow. Some people might have those out there. One other thing I want to... There's two things. You mentioned about the routing of the cable on the outside. Yeah. From a mechanic standpoint, love it. Way <laughs> easier to work on yeah. than trying to route cables through frames. Looks cleaner when they're routed through frames, though. 
And then last thing, we just had a girl come in today with Anna Valador. She got hit by a car. Oh. We checked out the bike, we checked everything out. I noticed that the display had had a big crack in it. And I asked her, oh my gosh, was this from the accident? Huh. And she said, no, it was when I folded it. Oh. So be careful when you do fold the handlebars. I'm gonna go ahead and shut the bike off before I do anything. Always a good idea. So when you fold this down this way, make sure that this is not gonna be hitting something because if you whack it too hard, this is fairly fragile. If you hit it with a, a bolt or something, it might crack that's and that's a really what happened good point. to hers. That's a really good point. So those point. are just points I wanna I'll make out. That was a ukulele girl that had that happen to her. Yeah, I she remember her. She was fine, no problem. She was, she was really cool. Yeah. So th yep. I think that's pretty good. And again, I'm glad that they went with metal brackets for the lights. Yeah, and the housing is at plastic in both cases, but at least things are, feel very solid on this bike. And it's fairly adjustable. The, the seat height and the telescoping stem mean that this can fit a larger rider. And we're both on the same bike. So Sam, um, maybe I'll have you put this in the backpack. Just wanted to show you guys, it's two amps, weighs about a pound and a half. There's the charging port again. So you might want to close that so water doesn't get in there, but then it's just a little bit finicky. You kind of got to reach in and have small fingers. Okay. Let's toss that in the backpack. We'll get ready to, to go for a ride here and try to beat the beat the sunset. I'm gonna go ahead and power it up. Comes on pretty quickly. Hold that up button, get the backlight going. And I'm gonna do the highest level of assist because I always like to do that. There we go. Pretty smooth start there for me. It actually worked out pretty well. Um, I like to do the kind of no hands thing. With the heavier wheel, you know, it's wide, it's fairly stable once you get going. But I noticed that if you come to a slower speed, it, it kind of wants to tip, like back to forth is how it feels. I'm not demonstrating it perfectly here for you, but that's the feeling that I'm getting. Got the nice flick bell and stuff over here. And then that cadence sensor. Feels pretty smooth, but as with most cadence sensors, there's a little bit of a delay going on there as I pedal. Um, just takes a minute for it to get started. And then of course I can override it because of those motor inhibitors, um, both those brake levers. Now I'm gonna do the, uh, the throttle here. Yeah, it really ramps up more smoothly than a lot of the other systems that I've, I've uh, tested. It, it doesn't quite have that like zoom feel. It's it ramps up. I'm gonna try this again in the lowest level of assist and see if there's any difference. Feels pretty similar, and we zipped right up to like 18 miles per hour. So I think it's probably pretty comparable that way. Let's go try to catch Sam. Oh, there's one. Yeah, it's actually kind of nice that it's not as overwhelming. Sometimes there's not a whole lot of difference in the acceleration between like the highest level of assist and the lowest level of assist. So I like that, you know, it, it feels pretty well thought out actually. There's Sam. Nice, and I can see, I mean, that headlight's looking pretty good. Here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, yeah, I wanna get you this way so that the light kind of shines. Why don't you pass me up, Sam? Got it. Just be careful for cars. Who am I kidding? No one's gonna be able to miss him with that flashing helmet, orange. Did you demonstrate the cruise control yet? Oh, I almost forgot. Yeah, so this bike has cruise control. So while you're riding at a certain level of speed, if you somehow use another finger, maybe it's like with pedal assist. I got pedal assist going, I hold minus, and there we go, cruise control. Now I don't have to pedal anymore. And that would save my hands. Just gives you a little bit more, um, it's just another feature, something that not every bike has. Not very many, no. Yeah, Chris, thank you so much, Sam. Is there anything else I forgot? Just go out, have fun, be safe. Yeah, rock on, dude. We'll see you at the campfire. This is fun. You guys, it's always special to get to work with Sam and other shops that uh, carry unique bikes and are honest about some of the trade-offs and stuff. I mean, this is a pretty good value for a fat tire folding electric bike. Buying online, sometimes you know you gotta do more setup and tuning this. He did a lot of work to make sure this worked perfectly. It's gonna take longer if, if you don't have any of that experience or any of the right tools. Um, good luck if you're buying this on Amazon. Please chime in in the comments or in the forums. I've got a quality sports section set up specifically so that people can chime in and, and let, let us know like the truth about this because I'm getting a bike that's just like perfect and I'm riding it for a short time period and I really wanna help you 
Um, you know, we do get like a fee for doing these reviews and stuff, but it's not a promotional thing. Um, so yeah, I welcome your feedbacks. Uh, Sam, you have a question? No, or? I just wanted to comment. If you buy a bike online, try to get a rapport with your local bike shop and have them assemble it for you. Oh yeah. If, if more and more people are doing that, maybe they'll start considering carrying electric bikes if they're not already. Yeah, and that's a good point. They, they do make money when you, uh, you know, you spend a hundred bucks and they'll build it up for you and then they get to kind of see some of the technology out there. I think you guys kind of know this stuff. But. Yeah, and support them by buying your lock from them, get your helmet from them, and then they're more likely to help you out like when you get your flat tire and you show yeah. up with your e-bike for the first time. With the funky size tube like yeah. on these that's going to be tough to get you yeah. might actually want to get an extra if you live somewhere where they might have thorns and stuff e-bikes are becoming more and more popular and i think you're going to see them more and more across america well that's awesome as always guys love you ride safe we'll see you next time yep